Welcome to your Mega News Roundup for the launch of Mega Man x Dive Offline. Coming to you from the Shadowrock ZX YouTube channel and the TMN Network or the MegaManNetwork.com. I am your host, Thy Gameplayer, standing in for Shadowrock while he's on a moving-related hiatus. Regardless, Mega News is finally back. This episode is written by Shadowrock himself with me, TGP, providing the narration and edited all together by our wonderful editor, MegaQuit. With all the introductions out of the way, as you can imagine, we have tons of Mega Man and Mega-esque related content to catch up to. Uh, too much to be perfectly honest with you. So to keep things digestible, today's episode will be a mini review and news recap on the just launched Mega Man X Dive offline. In the future, you can expect more Mega News roundups that hit upon the general highlights from the months of June, July, August, and September 2023. Without further ado, let's rock. So, Mega Man X Dive Offline just came out on September 1st, opening a whole can of irregular data to address. We do have the game in hand and plan to provide a more in-depth coverage in the future, but for now, here's the breakdown on the offline version of the Deep Law. If you have access to Steam, the Google Play Store on Android, or the App Store on iOS, you can grab Mega Man X Dive Offline right now for a one-time payment of $29.99. Now we won't lie, the price has been a point of controversy among the community for fair reason. The online version that's shutting down on September 27th, by the way, is free to play has definitely spoiled our perception of value in regards to this game. What Shadowar can say is that if he could get all the characters, weapons, and content for $29.99 back when he was playing the online version, he would have paid that price in a heartbeat. And to be honest, I probably would have too, to be honest. Yeah. After all, veteran players such as ourselves know that pulling a new character of the week through Gacha can set you back literally hundreds of dollars if you're not able to save up enough element medals beforehand or you're just extremely unlucky. Compared to that, 30 bucks almost sounds like a steal for the amount of content you're getting. Shadow Rock does agree, however, that veteran players that have spent money on this game in the past deserve a discount, if not outright a free voucher. The question is, how to track who is a loyal player sound on Capcom's end with multiple regional servers, mobile, and Steam versions that online version has had. Maybe they could have offered a discount for players that downloaded the online version on Steam before a certain date, but that will never cover everyone. At the end of the day, for 30 bucks, you're getting a Mega Man game with the most playable characters and stages of any title in the series. Plus, it'll last you several hours, more than Mega Man 11 ever did, which launched at 30 bucks itself. So there's that to consider. Not everyone's going to get this game at the price point. Heck, even we feel like it's overpriced, and that's totally fine. Maybe wait for a discounted sale. It's down to your own perceived value and what you're looking for in the Mega Man title. If you still haven't clicked off this video after hearing $29.99 and still need more info, here are the main differences between the offline and online version of Mega Man X Dive. The pros, no gotcha, no microtransaction, and no additional DLC at all. Oh wait, he actually wrote more than one. That's kind of impressive. All right, Shadow Rock, I see how it is. Every character, weapon, and upgrade are earned in game through currency such as Zenny, elemental metals, and character slash weapon memory fragments, which you obtain as stage completion reward. Then they can be spent in the in-game store to unlock the power up whoever you want. AP for stages, EP for event, and stamina restrictions in Jacob Elevator have been entirely removed, essentially meaning you can play through everything non-stop unlike in online. Event stages can be selected and played whenever you want, allowing you to unlock the event-specific characters and weapons. This also means the event-exclusive parts of the main plot are no longer missable. Since PvP modes have been removed, character and weapon skills designed with PvP in mind have been tweaked to better suit PvE. The recommended power level for stages have been rebalanced throughout the entire game to help streamline the progression difficulty. Now that the game is feature complete, music and character voice player mode has been added. Despite some speculation leading up to release, this version has no online DRM whatsoever. No internet connection is required to play. Thanks to no online DRM, mod support is possible. We are aware of several people in the modding community working on exciting new content and improvements for the game, including a save file editor. 
control options have been tweaked to fully support controllers and provide better support for manual aim controls to the Steam version. If you wish to play on the go, this game works well on the Steam Deck and may help to put cruiser controls on the touchpad. A brand new ending scene and credit sequence have been added to the offline. The credits feature a new theme song, Recognized, that was originally conceptualized for the online version but was unable to be fully realized until now. During the credits, Rico runs down the central highway similar to the ending of X1. She passes by all the bosses in the game, including a couple of special surprises for veteran players in Aragon in the intro stage of X4 and the X-Hunter Violin from X2. Two bosses that were scrapped during production but were added to the credit sequence as a nod to the players. And hey, we get a small glimpse of player sand from the backside too along with a series of data strings running across from the monitor that has been a subject of discussion. Are they teasing a new game? An X-Dive sequel, perhaps? All I know is you Mega Man fans are mad thirsty for a new game when they're taking the tiniest thing as a teaser. Quench your thirst, for God's sakes. And now for the cons. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> Save data from online servers cannot be carried over, so you will be starting from scratch no matter what, at least without using mods. Since this is an offline version, online focused modes such as PvP battles, co-op, and guild modes have been removed. And we never got the PvP. Please press F to pay for respects. No collaboration characters, weapons, and the likes, such as Street Fighter, Monster Hunter, and Devil May Cry, with no DLC planned. However, all of the Mega Man series representation is still there. A baffling decision, but likely due to licensing costs, even amongst the in-house studios. The awful English translation remains the same, broken English mess as ever, and good luck making heads or tails of the storyline, and no console versions announced at this time. On that note, you may remember the two scrap bosses we mentioned from the new credit sequence. Well, there's more where that came from. There was a concept bar of incentives from Mega Man X Command Mission that was leaked by Nebula Joy. And upon the launch of Offline, Dive Development Team released an interview where they revealed that they were planning to add Prometheus from Mega Man ZX as a playable character. Prometheus is a character that many of us are hoping to be added and it was sure would have helped boasters of Dive's ZX roster, which only consisted of Ale, Pandora, and the alts of the two. Unfortunately, Dive's end of service was decided in the middle of their considerations to implement him, and thus Prometheus and the other scrapped characters and bosses had to be dropped. Heck, we wouldn't even be surprised if Blade Armor X was a consideration too, since we got the model kit around the same time the EOS was decided. It is certainly disappointing for a game that promised to be an ultimate love letter to everything Mega Man, but there ain't much to be done about corporate meddling. At least there's the possibility of mods or dare we hope additional DLC if the base version of the offline sells well enough. If you want to see the rest of the developer interview, check out Sunny's translation via Rockman Corner through the link in the description. Sadly, there is one more thing that we have to mention that definitely soured the mood leading up to the launch of Mega Man X Dive offline. Yep, you might already know where we're going with this. And if you excuse me, let me get this out of the way so that way I can just read this perfectly clear. <laughs> It's the X-Dive NFTs that popped up, featuring some rather amateurish looking pixel art of the characters. Unfortunately, the NFT accounts appear to be official. There is a Twitter, I mean X page, and a Discord server too. Or used to be, I should say. Though hilariously, Karma hit them back fast as the NFT Discord server accidentally allowed all members to add their own emojis and post whatever they wanted, and well, you can imagine the chaos that ensued because of that. Oh well, that's the crowd they chose to conduct business with, and you reap what you sow. Now listen, we're not going to sit here and explain to you what NFTs are, and why they're a bad deal and not worth getting involved in. Most of you watching are fully aware and smart enough to stay clear of the stuff, and if you aren't, there are better resources than us to, out there to get you informed. What we will say here is in our capacity as a member of Capcom Creators Program, we're disappointed in Capcom's involvement with NFTs and we do not condone them whatsoever. We are happy to continue supporting their video games that we love, but they will not receive our support nor advertisement for their NFTs in case they should ask us. 
This will be the first and last time we mention NFT content in a video like this. We do hate to end things off in a sour note such as this, so let us put aside the NFT debacle and just make one X dive offline on its own merits. This game is one of those releases that may not be fully appreciated for a long time, but is a relatively unprecedented concept to the preservation of a of a mobile game through an offline version such as this. Even though newcomers may be turned off by the price and us veterans have had our fill of dive already after the online version, we do appreciate dive offline existing from out of a preservation perspective and we hope that this game will spark a trend of a more popular mobile games getting to live in a similar manner when their own end of service inevitably arrives. Because regardless of what you think of mobile gaming, it's a shame to lose all the content that is being thrown away forever every time a game reaches the end of service. We are lucky that in this particular case, the fans weren't tasked to doing all the preservation work on their own, as Capcom was nice enough to provide the groundwork from which a little botting magic, we can potentially keep enjoying the infinite possibilities contained with the world of the deep log for years to come, to make the Mega Man cross dive we can only dream of. After all, we have a whole laundry list of playable characters that still need to be added from X armors to more X series rep to other Mega Man series than Over 1 uh, and Spider themselves. But if you wish to provide feedback for Dive Offline, in the description you will find a link to Capcom's online survey for the player feedback. As a reward for filling it out, you will get a free wallpaper of the game's key art. For more on the deep blog and all things Mega Man, including future Mega Man news roundups when we play catch up little by little, stay tuned for Shadowrock CX. Thank you to Thy Gameplay, hey, that's me, and Mega Quint for all the help and the MM Network or the Mega Man Network.com for hosting our Mega News episodes in blog form. Check out all of their channels in the description. Until next time, rock on and have yourself a wonderful time zone. Peace.